Hello and welcome. My name is Martin Trzyanski and I'm the CEO and co-founder at Remedo Labs, um, a Polish spin-off from Poznan University of Technology working in the field of 5G and beyond. And my talk today is about 5G and how it relates to private mobile networks as a new trend. So let me start a little bit uh, about the background, what a private mobile network is, but even before, let's speak about the enablers. The first one is that there are technologies that enable that, such as um, dynamic or shared spectrum access. Um, uh, the 3GPP features are related to private mobile networks, so-called um, non-public networks, as well as multi-operator schemes um, allowing the operators to share um, the network. Uh, the other puzzle is regulation that is happening around the world with um, allowing um, the operators or enterprise to use specific uh, local spectrum um, or unlicensed spectrum or sharing schemes for um, local services and private mobile networks. And finally, there are new business models, including uh, smaller operators as well as private mobile networks and enterprises and the new types of um, integrators who are able to develop those solutions for specific needs. So what a mobile network in terms of privacy is. So it's uh, basically a mobile network in the enterprise for specific needs. And it's mobile because it's a tailored LTE or 5G network for specific use case or for specific industrial uh, application. Um, because it allows the carrier grade privacy and security as well as uh, quality of service latency requirement and allowing mobility that was not present in the uh, Wi-Fi world. It's also um, enabling a dedicated deployment of dedicated local network that is independently managed, but also could be um, collectively managed, as we will see in a second. And thirdly, it's because we could have it owned by different parties like MNO or Enterprise itself, or a third party or a venue owner who just um, allows to use services. Why 5G is um, within that area, why it fits into private mobile networks? Well, first, because there are dedicated features within 3GPP work that allows that, including the possibility to use um, different spectrum types, including natively um, uh, application of unlicensed spectrum with NRU. Secondly, there are other um, features related to system architecture, to protocol stack like non-public network, which is dedicated use case and uh, work package for um, a private network with unique IDs, with independent or integrated architecture with those different options, as well as fallback to public um, network. Um, then 5G is also deployed or developed or um, 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 research with the use of uh, um, ultra low latency and high reliability in mind for high performance requirements uh, that was not uh, allowed or um, um, possible before for like um, real time automation wireless control systems that previously were just used with uh, cabling. And also there are features like high precision positioning that enable new use cases for industrial IoT requirement. So all in all, 5G is um, uh, well prepared to be uh, the private mobile network because it's flexible, scalable, future-proof, also high-performing with those particular uh, features, as well as 3GPP supported with the use of carrier-grade um, security, privacy, and can be enabled to optimize for local services. Of course, LTE is also considered for that applications, but 5G is, um, let's say, natively suited for, um, for pri private um, uh, local networks. Now, in terms of this already mentioned feature called non-public network being private one, within the uh, 3GPP release 16, there are two options. The first one is standalone NPM. So basically, you have a standalone network not relying on MNO, so you have to be your own operator but you can still have a possibility to access the public network and vice versa. And um, the UEs basically have subscription profiles in their SIM cards to use that network. The other one is public network integrated, non-public network, 
meaning that is deployed within MNO with a slice or dedicated spectrum, different options of, of sharing resources or a sharing network for that purpose. And it's based mostly on the cost to access group. So you have a subscription including uh, within your regular uh, SIM card within a, um, a CAG IT, so closed access group. Now, what are the differences between them in terms of practical applications? In the left case, which is standalone NPN, you have to have your own license spectrum, or of course you can use the other one, the other types. On the right hand side, it's an MNO spectrum. So you lease it from MNO, MNO allocates it, or you can get um, a portion or a dedicated spectrum subleased from um, from a regulator. Um, in terms of maintenance, um, subscription, UE and security, they are different in terms of ownership. So in the left hand side, where you have the standalone NPN, um, you have basically your own IT department or a third party integrator, not related totally to MNO, um, responsible for those aspects. In terms of right hand side, so public network integrated, because it's integrated with an MNO, it's the responsibility of an MNO. So MNO handles maintenance, subscription, security aspects. Um, in terms of roaming, in the left hand side, there is no roaming because it's a separate network. In the right hand side, it's a regular roaming, so you can have other uh, features uh, to use that. In terms of expenses, they are the opposite. So in the left hand side, you put more money for CapEx because you need to build your network your own. In the right hand side, you have to uh, use um, the operator um, spectrum and um, equipment. That's why it's a low CapEx because you don't invest in that, but you have a high cap OPEX because you have to pay licenses and fees for using those. Now, what are the different options for deployments? So first one is totally independent private network, pretty much the standalone NPN, where you have all the, um, let's say, subscription data, uh, databases, um, your services, so your data as well, as well as control at your own premise. On the other end, there is an MNO that you don't have any connection with. Um, and there is um, another option like run and uh, signaling shared. In that case, you have your data and your services close to the other devices and close to your um, access, but um, you leave the MNO to use um, uh, and to provide subscription and control um, um, as the shared network, you're sharing the run plus uh, some um, signaling. And uh, the third option enabled by network slicing introduced with 5G, so specifically a 5G feature, is where you basically put everything to MNO and you just have a radio access at your site. And what it is different towards the other ones is that you have your data out um, to the operator site, uh, which means that you um, don't have that data, so in terms of um, privacy, but also um, that uh, you introduce additional latency because you have to have it um, um, in a separate um, place. Now, what are the different pros and cons? Um, in the first case, it's complete isolation from public network. Um, you have independent quality of service assurance, so any turbulences at the MNO side doesn't affect you. Uh, you have secured and local data storage and you have everything in place, so low predictable latency and you don't have any subscription charges. But on uh, the downside, uh, you have high capex because you have to buy everything, hardware, software, license, uh, spectrum, or you will use unlicensed, which you pay by having higher interference, and you need your own skilled IT staff to handle the maintenance of that network. In terms of the second one, which is run signaling shed, you license MNO spectrum, but you have to pay for that, but pretty much lower um, cost. You have lower capex, you don't have your own um, your own um, network entities, uh, and this is MNO who handles the SLA and allows you to, to use the services. Uh, you still have your data secured at your own um, location with the UPF, 
and you have still the low predictable latency. On the contrary, it's not completely isolated from MNO and you have some signaling dependent, depending on what's the load on the MNO side, it might affect your uh, services. And you have your subscription at the MNO side, which means you have charges. And you still need them um, trained IT staff because at least some part will be handled locally by yourself. In terms of network slides, uh, well, it's um, logically separated from public network. All the other things are pretty much the same. The most important difference is that you don't have um, your uh, data at your own site. So it's moved to MNO, which firstly uh, moves the um, local data outside uh, from the secure uh, location to outside. And then secondly, it introduces um, uh, latency because it's not at the, at your site you have to go to the uh, other network and um, what should you choose well it depends uh, before you decide you have to ask your questions so firstly who owns and manages the spectrum network assets and who owns and manages the core network so depending on your use case you might have different options then secondly do you actually need license spectrum because this is a stringent requirement for interference and all that uh, stuff or you rely on nine license and you actually don't need that uh, stringent requirements um, for um, managing interference um, on the other hand there is there are things related to capabilities what needs to be dedicated um, do you need a dedicated database do, can you allow to have um, a larger latency or um, do you have to have everything in place can you allow someone else using your network or not and then fourthly do you need it for um, a single local place like a factory or you have multiple factories and you will need um, the private network there but you need don't need um, the coverage around or you actually need the coverage around and you have a wide area requirement so having those in place you can actually decide which options do you have and by the way those three different options that I just showed before um, there are sub options in between there are different um, uh, sub options that you can actually use there so where do we use private 5g as a final point well firstly when you need dedicated solutions for uh, industry stakeholders like factories power plants transportation hubs and so on where you need mobility um, that you need the carrier grade security and so on but you still want a wireless solution then secondly, again, if you have location dependent services that are only needed in a certain place, but not everywhere. Then thirdly, if you have uh, specific services at a single location, but you need it for regular MNO um, services, um, and you can use it for neutral host applications. And fourthly, and maybe more, most importantly for 5G itself, is that if you have mission critical applications with very stringent requirements that 5G allows. And with that, I would like to thank you for attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now.